updates. Hey. All right, Rob. Uh, Michael Malone, the coach of the Denver Nuggets, heavily favored Denver Nuggets in these finals. You got him in five. I've got him in six. He spoke to the media today. Uh, now that they know they're playing the Heat, here he is. I often make the comparison, and I never coached Tim Duncan, you know, but just from coaching against him and hearing stories about those who have been around him, like Tim Duncan was a selfless superstar. And I, I look at Nicole Jokic in the same vein. I think Nicole Jokic is a truly selfless superstar where it's not about him. He's not looking for people to look, look at me, tell me how great I am. He's almost embarrassed by the attention. He just wants to be one of the guys in the locker room, have fun, work hard, and win. I, I agree with him, Rob. Do you have any disagreement with what he said? Uh, that no. Comparison? Yeah, I mean, that, that's what Jokic seems like. He actually, Rob, earlier in his career, um, you know, as he was becoming a great player, he didn't shoot enough. Like, he, he doesn't, you know, shoot as much as you might expect him to because he is such a selfless player, as his coach Michael Malone said. Um, but, you know, when Jamal Murray got hurt, Jokic began scoring more just because that's what the team needed him to do. And that's when he put up the huge numbers. They got him the back-to-back -back MVP awards. Uh, so uh, this year, Jamal Murray's back from injury. And what does Jokic do? His, his scoring goes down almost three points to, from 27.1 last year to 24.5 this year. And so like Tim Duncan, Rob, you know this about Tim Duncan. His numbers weren't outlandish. He, he obviously could have scored a lot more points than he did. But, you know, what, what he was more concerned about was winning championships. And before Michael Jordan, Rob, this is actually, in, in my view, one of the arguments for Jordan's greatness because he did change, or I should say goatness. He changed conventional thinking about the NBA because you remember before Jordan – took over and began winning championships, conventional wisdom was that you couldn't lead the league in scoring and win championships, not consistently. I think Kareem did it the first year when he won a championship in Milwaukee, I believe. Um, but Larry Bird never led the league in scoring. The Lakers never had a scoring leader during showtime. Uh, the Pistons, when they won their championships, no scoring leader. The Sixers with Dr. J and Moses Malone. I mean, so, and Tim Duncan, Rob, Tim Duncan's highest scoring season was 23 points a game. But yet he's a top 10 player of all time. And I do see that in Jokic. Here's what I want to throw at you, Rob, though. Is that if Jokic is the best player in the world, and that's not the debate, but, you know, I think he is. I'm not sure where you are. But if he wins this and he's recognized by many as the best player in the world, do you think it's good for the league to have such an understated player and personality to be the best player in that sport? I, Mike Trout is, is an example in baseball. Yeah, I, I don't think it's the best uh, situation, but I don't, sometimes you don't have a choice. If he's the best, he's the best. Tim Duncan – is a missed free throw away, literally, from when being 6-0 and like Michael Jordan. Nobody would look at him in the same vein. A, he didn't win all six MVPs. B, most people would be hard-pressed to even tell you what Tim Duncan sounds like in an interview. <laughs> uh, you know, you can't even hear really? Tim Duncan come into a room because he's got sandals on. I mean, I'm just saying... <laughs> He was that kind of guy, Chris. Like and you jean barely, shorts. Yeah, and G cut off <laughs> jean shorts. And if it wasn't that he was seven foot tall, you might not even know he's around at all. I mean, like, like Rob, that was he was invisible. To your point, and 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 this is somewhat of an indictment on, uh, I mean, myself included, the basketball media. If Tim Duncan had the personality of Kevin Garnett, he might be in the goat discussion. I mean, he won five championships, never had a Kobe Bryant alongside him, a la Shaq. Um, never had, you know, the talent around him that Kareem or Magic had. And um, 
but we don't think of him that way. And I think he was great. I, I obviously put Jordan ahead of him, but he might be higher up in that discussion if he had more of a colorful personality. But I, I think, Rob, it's fine. Like you said, you don't, I mean, look, a guy's personality is his personality. And if he happens to be the best player in your sport, then you can't punish him because he's not, you know, a charismatic personality, at least publicly. Um, but I think it's fine if the best player in the league is like that, as long as you do have other personalities who are top players. Right, right, because right. everybody can't be that. And the same thing, it, it, you, you mentioned Mike Trout. Chris, I hate to mention I hate to break it to you. Nobody's talking about Mike Trout anymore. They talk He's about no Otani, the best player in the league, That's and they sure. talk about Aaron Judge. If you ask Major League Baseball, do you want Aaron Judge plays in the Bronx for the Bombers, hits home runs, Chris? He's got a right. great smile. He's six foot seven. Uh, you know, like like can you can you ask for anything more? Can, like, could you no. ask for anything more? You can't. That's do you think that's because Trout? And obviously he's he's still a great player, but you know he's not putting up the numbers he was a few years ago. Do you think we aren't talking about him because of that, or because of his late, you know, his laid back personality? It's a combination. And other because guys have emerged. Whether you think they're better than him or not, but they've emerged and they do have personalities that are great for the public. Yeah, I think it's a combination. You know, he's been hurt, Chris, the last couple of years. Hasn't, you know, put up the same numbers, not in the MVP. The MVP race is about Otani and Judge every year now, right? Right. I mean, right. like, so he's including not even the best. Including this year. Right, right including this year. And he's not even the best player on his own team, right? It's Otani. Right. So how can you be talking about Trout? And and I do I do think that, uh, you know, him not having the personality – and, and and no one's mad at him, Chris. Everybody's not the same. Right, right. Some people just, they are who they are, and that's Trout's thing, and I think he's just very happy at going out, playing ball, and not being in the spotlight. That's fine, but it doesn't work for a league. I mean, Rob, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, he, now he was different from Duncan and Jokic in that Kareem, you know, at that time, he just was untr- didn't trust the media. Uh, was um, almost had almost a, a militant attitude. I hope I'm not, uh, you know, misstating it. But, you know, he, he was very untrusting of the media, kept to himself. Um, some of his teammates will tell you, that obviously they got along, but that he, he rarely even talked much with them at that time. Right. And uh, he was the best player in the world. And what helped him you know, was Magic Johnson comes along and Magic loves the media. Magic loved to talk. He loved to smile. And so Magic kind of took that role on that team. And Kareem didn't really have to deal with it. Um, And so him being the best player in the league but having that personality, again, it's fine if other guys, as long as you have players who have that charismatic personality, that because especially... For the NBA, Rob, which is a league that blossomed under David Stern, the commissioner, by selling personalities, individuals, you know, Magic, Michael, Dr. J. Well, Dr. J was before Stern, you know, for the most part. But, you know, they sold individuals more so than the team. So you do need those personalities when that's the case.